Now Gaddy showed a lot of things last season. Number one, coachability. Number two, humility. Never saw him complaining. For those who actually watch film and not stats, Niles Gaddy's job last season was to contain the edge, making sure no big runs are out or uh, QB runs, make sure there's containment. He wasn't the lead blitzer. That job was James Houston. Just like Keontae Hampton, Keontae Hampton's role was more of a coverage linebacker. You see the Jackson State defense and you assume everybody just blitz. That doesn't work that way. There are a couple players that had to do their jobs to make sure everybody else can do theirs. And I'll chime in. What's good, everyone? This is Raw Truth Media giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Please like and share this video. Niles Gaddy. Now, I know what you're going to say. Oli only had four sacks. To the stat watchers out there, you got to do better than that. As you know, with every defense, each defense alignment edge rusher it's not going to have double digit sacks there's usually a lead blitzer last season was James Houston and he was really good he was the best there's no dispute in that but just because he was good doesn't mean everybody else didn't have a role The Jackson State defense was special at times, a lot of times, because everyone bought, bought into the team concept, doing your job. Now Gaddy's job was to hold Katana. If you watch the film, he, that's clearly his job. It's a sacrifice. Now, not everyone can do that role. You know how it is. Everybody want to get stats, want to be the man. But looking at that video, Niles Gaddy is working his tail off. He's working on his pass rushing moves. Uh, I just had uh, someone tell me that's very close with the Jackson State program that he's close to 245 or he's right at 245. He's gaining muscle while maintaining his speed. And if you watch Niles Gaddy's demeanor, his work ethic, you see why Coach Prime had him speaking at the SWAC Media Day last season. Everybody's like, man, who is this guy? He wasn't playing in the SWAC uh, uh, the year before. He wasn't the highest recruit. But what he did was outwork people. He outworked everyone. He was coachable. And he did his job well. And that's part of being a team player. Not everyone's going to get that limelight. But will, will you assist on winning? Now, I bet he'll tell you himself that, yeah, he could use a couple of pass rush moves and uh, different hand placement techniques. And I'm sure he's working on that right now. But people are forgetting. When he was at Tennessee, because this is how power fives do, if you're not a five-star or a high four-star, you're not going to get that one-on-one -on -one coaching that you should get from other schools. When Niles Gaddy got to Jackson State, he has all the hands-on training, all the uh, teaching moments that he never had at Tennessee. And Tennessee's a great school. Now, they haven't been winning a lot lately in football. But when you go to big PWI schools, there's so many players to a roster. The active roster now is 90 or 85. 
but don't forget there's about 30 more uh, walk-ons. So the skill coaches, they're so wrapped up in the game plan and trying to win games, they may not coach up everybody, if you get what I'm saying. Niles Gaddy transferring to Jackson State, being uh, coached by former NFL position coaches. It gets no better. But I'm excited for his development. I'm excited to see him add to this defense like he always has. And just being a leader. You know, sometimes a leader is not always vocal, but leads by example. I see why Coach Prime is fond of him. Because he looks like someone that's raised right. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am type of person. And I'm just going off what I've seen from interviews and what people have told me about him. And shout out to Niles Gaddy's father, Robert Gaddy. He used to play with Steve McNair back in the day with Alcorn. Uh, He raised a great young man. And I'm rooting for him. I root for the underdog. Nothing was handed to Niles Gaddy. Each year, he had to earn it himself and show that he belonged. That's what's so unique about this Jackson State defense. Everybody's looking at the stars and the transfer rankings. But there are some who got it out the mud. Look at uh, Cameron Selman Craig. He wasn't the highest freshman recruit last season but his presence was known and for all the people who say oh coach prime has favoritism stop it when you have a coach who would bench his own son in the game for being late that's when you know he's about winning and he's about fairness if you don't practice hard he's not gonna play you in the game if he's showing up late in meetings he's not gonna play in the game he's been consistent at that but I'm looking forward to the season now has gotta keep doing your thing keep working and uh just watch how this defense looks that's all I'm about to, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say uh the first game is against FAMU as we know I will say this about FAMU before I go even though they're playing against North Carolina, North Carolina could get them ready for the Orange Blossom Classic. Something to think about. This is Raw Truth Media, and I'm out.